Hi, I'm Tony Sampson. I work in the School of Arts and Cultural Industries at UEL. I'm a reader in Digital Media Cultures, and I lead the MA in Media and Communications. I also work with uh, PhD students, prof doc students, on a range of interdisciplinary projects. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how my research interests have coincided with the recent events of COVID-19. Over the past decade, I've written a trilogy of books developing a broad understanding of media contagion theory, or virality as it's sometimes called. Up until now, this work has cut a fairly marginal figure in media and communications. The field of study seemed more focused on what constitutes connections rather than what disrupts them. For many, contagion theory appeared to be little more than a mere metaphor for digital media culture. But now, all of a sudden, unpredictably and rather shockingly, viral media stands at the centre of contemporary debate in the field. In the wake of COVID-19, there's been an abrupt move to the viral, from the margin to the middle. COVID-19 is an epochal pandemic. The health and survival of massive scale populations are at stake. There has been a panicked political response. The virus has exposed the underlying impact of years of austerity, not least in healthcare. The focus on the viral is now both entirely relevant and resolutely non-metaphorical. Virality is not the first theory of social media contagion. For example, back in 1994, Douglas Rushkoff proposed an early viral model of media. Rushkoff's media virus or information virus challenged old illogical control models by pointing towards a participatory culture. More recently, the media virus has been developed into a concept of spreadable media. In retrospect, we might criticize some of these models for their over celebratory nature. Another media virus appeared in the early noughties. It was extracted from a few loose remarks made by Richard Dawkins in his book, The Selfish Gene, published in 1976. The meme is an analogy of the selfish gene. It functions according to a neo-Darwinian evolutionary algorithm. The meme is often associated with the rhetoric of viral marketing. As some enthusiastic marketeers claimed at the time, the meme may seem accidental, but the pass on power of a media message could be memetically encoded and harnessed to spread as determined. Unlike the media virus and the meme, Virality is more theoretically nuanced. Certainly with regards to its approach to mechanisms and questions of whom or what does the harnessing. Virality is more closely aligned to what some authors call the accidents of contagion. Along these lines, the COVID-19 event draws our attention to the workings of a viral logic that capriciously crisscrosses from biological to cultural, technological and economic contexts. Universal virality can condition the movement of people and messages. Framed by the logic of such things as quarantine and confinement, security and prevention. Virality can also automate affective, emotional and imitated responses. For example, we see outbreaks of panic buying sparked by proliferating images of empty supermarket shelves. Rational economic choices can also similarly be replaced by irrational and uncontrollable financial contagion. Virality can be peculiar because it's interwoven with contagions of psychological fear, anxiety, conspiracy, and further financial turmoil. I had to think these contagions through 
in immediate context is a fairly complex task. We are, after all, dealing with an ecology of technological, biological and affective realities, moving about in strange plural feedback loops. To understand these strange feedback loops, Virality makes significant references to an influential 19th century social theorist, Gabriel Tard. Tard's Society of Imitation also focuses on the accidents of contagion. Tard presents us with a society of docile sleepwalkers, similar to those crazed shoppers panic buying toilet roll and paracetamol. Nonetheless, we must not mistake Tard's sleepwalker for a kind of collective stupidity. The social sleepwalkers are defined in the absence of a clear distinction between biological inclinations on one hand and social cultural tendencies to imitate on the other. Virality is deeply intertwined with the social and the political. Before COVID-19, some political theorists argued that the mere threat of a global pandemic could be used to tactically justify increased measures of security, risk and containment. For sure, in the wake of the pandemic, there are multiple levels of biopolitical aims at play. The recurring question of immunological borders, for example, who gets in, who stays out, will continue to linger after COVID-19. However, virality of this kind is not a convenient metaphor. It is the very real viral event of COVID-19 that has produced its own social and political reality. This is a reality that our habits and worlds must bend and adapt to. Virality also patterns how our bodies relate to each other. These are patterns of connection and disconnection. They concern the movement of susceptible, infected, immune and removed populations. To conclude then, we can say that COVID-19 will continue to spur a range of political actions, social habits, behaviours and physical effects. Some of these patterns will be predictable, others will be novel. Some of the pegs that fix the future movement of people and messages will no doubt produce more docile sleepwalkers. Certainly after COVID-19, we will want to return to address our government's initial responses to the crisis. We will need to question why business as usual and herd immunity appear to take precedence over social and economic lockdown. Similarly, there will be questions about COVID denial exemplified by Trump in the US and Bolsonaro in Brazil. Furthermore, we will want to know why COVID testing of leading political figures and royal family members were prioritized over frontline health workers. The virus has also ignited debates on racism for example, incidences of so-called maskophobia have led to Chinese students having to opt between the insecurity of infection and the fear of racism. In contrast, though, we have also seen the possibilities of a highly valued system of care. The horror of COVID-19 might also clear the way for some kind of large-scale radical reaction that addresses climate change and biodiversity crises. After the applauding of the brave health workers and songs of the shutdown subside, painful social, economic and political struggles will inevitably follow the virus. How these struggles will coexist against the shifting backdrop of disciplinary confinement and control is yet to be seen. But new political assemblages will emerge. Thank you for listening. Please check out my new book related to this topic, A Sleepwalker's Guide to Social Media, published by Politi Press in the summer.
I'd also like to acknowledge the input of Professor Yusi Parika, who is the co-author of the paper this brief text was based on. Thank you.